My name is Terry Connors. I'm your instructor for this first module on wood identification. Over the next hour or so, I'm going to try to talk to you about wood identification in terms of wood structure. I'm going to try to help you understand what wood looks like on a cellular level, all the way from cells up through growth rings, and then I'm going to try to help you relate that to the structure you see in a crosswood or in a wood tie as it's going past you in the grading booth. Once you understand all the differences and how they're related back to how wood is actually grown. So let's start off with some very generic information about wood. We have two terms you've probably heard before, hardwoods and softwoods. Now, when I was young, these are words that I used from my dad. You know, hardwood trees are the trees that have leaves that fall every year. The oak trees, the maple trees, the birch trees, beech trees. They turn different colors, but the leaves come down every fall. The softwood trees are the pine trees and the fir trees and spruce trees, things like that. They've got cones. They've got little green needles. We call them evergreens. Some of the needles actually fall every year. If you've ever had a uh, pine tree in your front yard, you know you have needles to sweep off your windshield every morning. But they're conifers. They've got those cones. The hardwood and softwood names don't really have any relation to the actual physical hardness of those trees. Softwood trees sometimes are harder than hardwood trees. For example, southern yellow pine, you're all familiar with down here in Alabama, is actually a wood that is harder than some of the, than some of the uh, hardwood trees. Balsa wood, for example, is a hardwood tree. Those of you that made model airplanes have flown kites when you were children. Those kites, those model airplanes, are made out of balsa wood. Balsa wood is a hardwood, but it's very, very soft. You can actually dent it with your thumbnail, can't you? So the name hardwood and softwood doesn't have any relation to the actual physical properties of those particular kind of species. They're just names. We understand what they mean. But again, I just want to emphasize they have no physical significance. So softwood trees, again, down here in Alabama refer to things like loblaw pines. You see a lot of these in plantations. When I was living down here in Mississippi, they're actually cutting down uh, or replanting a lot of the soybean fields and putting them into pines. Now we have a lot of pine trees down here in the south, more than we ever had before. Trees are made out of cells. That's the most important thing to start off talking about. And this is a picture taken under a scanning electron microscope of a softwood tree. The important thing to notice here is all these cells look pretty much the same, don't they? They're all nice, neat little rows. They're all about the same size. They're all about the same shape. All these little fibers are about an eighth of an inch long. If you ever tear a piece of toilet tissue and hold up the light and you see this little fuzzy edge, you're seeing fibers that are about three, four, five millimeters long, just about an eighth of an inch long or so. Those are from a softwood tree. Hardwood fibers are much shorter. They're harder to see. If you tear a piece of writing paper, you'll see a difference. The other thing that's important here is all these little holes in the side. Not only do cells have holes in the center, but they also have holes in the side that allow fluids to pass through the tree, not just up and down, but also from side to side. And sometimes a path of conduction might be sort of circuitous like this, up and down sideways and down and sideways and so forth. It's not just straight up and down the tree in all cases. This is important when we think about trees having to dry. We've got to get water out of those trees. We've got to get some sort of preservative in, like a creosote solution, for example. Fluid has to come in fluid has to come out again. Uh, th there's got to be some path for all this to happen. This is what a growth ring looks like. When I was a boy, Dad and I used to go to the park, we count the growth rings on a stump. I bet a lot of you have done that too. You count the growth rings to see how old the tree is. And a growth ring on a stump, you're looking at different color bands of wood, right? If you notice this diagram, you see we have actually a growth ring made out of two different appearing kinds of cells. They all look the same within each of these individual bands. But this early wood is a part of the growth ring that actually grows first every year. The cells are big, nice and fat and big, but the cell walls are thin. So it contains a lot of sap, and when that sap dries out, you're left with a thin balloon, essentially, with a lot of airspace in the middle. That's the early wood. This late wood grows later on in the growing season. Sometimes people call it summer wood. The cell walls get thicker. The space in the middle gets smaller. Overall, the bulk density of that part of the wood is higher. 
it's a heavier, harder piece of wood. And you see a color change. So for early wood, for example, right here, you have a light color where it's low density. And that dark band is that late wood where you have a high density part of the wood. Okay? You can verify that for yourself by taking your thumbnail. Thumbnail's a great density check. You've always got it with you. It's always going to be the same hardness, right? Try pushing it into the early wood of a piece of southern pine, you'll be able to dent it. Try pushing it into late wood of that southern pine, the second half of that growth ring, and your thumbnail will bend first. There's a big density difference. This is what a cross section of a tree looks like. This happens to be a railroad tie, and it's a southern pine railroad tie. Cross section is another name for the stump, except now we've upended it. We're looking at it end on. We're looking at the end of that particular piece of wood, aren't we? So here's the growth ring. Each of these dark bands marks the end of another year's growth. Growth rings do, do not always have to be the same width. Trees are going to respond to growing conditions. If they have uh, crowded conditions, if their neighbors start to overpower them and the tree gets less sunlight, the growth rings will shrink. If the growing conditions turn dry, the growth rings will shrink. Conversely, if all of a sudden some forester comes in and logs all the trees around, all of a sudden this tree's got a lot of sunlight, it'll grow faster. If it gets a lot of water, if there's a, a flood year, for example, but the tree doesn't die, it might say, wow, I can grow, I can put on a lot of wood that year, the growth rings will get wider. So the growth ring appearance by itself, the width or the narrowness of it, is not a characteristic of the species. It's a characteristic of the growing conditions and sometimes where that tree is grown. A tree with a short growing season from the north, for example, would you expect that to have narrower or wider growth rings compared to the same species from the south? Shorter growing season would probably respond by putting out <coughs> shorter growth rings, wouldn't it? Doesn't have anything at all to do with the kind of wood you're looking at. It tells you more about the growing conditions and perhaps the location of where that particular tree came from. I want to talk to you a little bit about growth ring transitions. So far, all I've said is that we have early wood and we have late wood, and together they make up a growth ring. And the example I gave you a moment ago was for a southern pine. So I'm going to continue with growth rings on softwoods. This is what a southern pine growth ring looks like under microscope, right? This is pretty much the same diagram I showed you a moment ago. Thin cell walls, wide open spaces in the middle. We have a very sudden transition to late wood. It's like someone flipped a switch, isn't it? Early wood, early wood, early wood, late wood, late wood, late wood. But it isn't always the case. This can vary from one species to another. If you're up north and you see eastern white pines or western white pines at the local Home Depot, for example, you're going to see something a little bit different. The transitions between early wood and late wood are not sudden. They're not abrupt. They're very gradually changing throughout that season. This is a characteristic of species, and this is one of the ways that you can use to look at the end grain of a piece of wood and say you have this kind of wood or something else. That's a characteristic that you can use to help identify the species you're looking at, whether it has a gradual transition or an abrupt transition.